For over 90 years, the musicians of the United States Army Band Pershing Zone have been the premier musical representatives of America's Army. Through music, they have shared the story of our nation and its soldiers worldwide. We welcome you to this performance on behalf of all the men and women of the Army, for they are the strength of the nation, ready today and prepared for tomorrow. Would you please rise and join in the singing of our national anthem. Please be seated.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. I'm Sergeant First Class Dave Brown, your announcer for this evening's grand concert. We open tonight with John Philip Sousa's Invincible Eagle March, written for his band's performance at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York in 1901. Sousa called it one of his sunshine marches, saying that it showcases the military spirit at its lightest and brightest. We turn now to the music of Verdi and his popular overture to La Forza del Destino, an opera based on the inescapability of fate. As Stephen Ledbetter put it, the opera is so full of unlikely coincidences that it is hard to summarize the plot with a straight face. The story begins with a hero refusing to accept the challenge to duel his lover's father. He decides to throw away his pistol, which accidentally discharges, killing the father anyway. <laughs> the opera ends when the two lovers, after years of separation, just happen to bump into each other at a monastery, just after the hero has mortally wounded his lover's brother, but not so wounded as to be unable to kill his sister before dying himself. And then the grief-stricken hero jumps off a cliff, the end. <laughs> well, he, apparently even Verdi was depressed at the performance of the opera, and so he later amended the ending to make it a bit less depressing, and then he'd added an overture to the opera, which opens with three ominous chords, which signify the power of fate in La Forza del Destino.
our first soloist this evening grew up in Paris, Texas. <laughs> he holds degrees in tuba performance from Baylor University and the University of Kentucky, where he also studied instrumental conducting. He went on to teach at Stephen F. Austin State University before joining us here in the United States Army Band in 2002, where he currently performs with the concert band. Tonight he performs one of the most famous and most challenging solos ever written for brass instruments that has become a rite of passage for solo performers since the days of John Philip Sousa and Herbert L. Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Warrant Officer Jeremiah Keeler to the stage to conduct the Carnival of Venice performed by our very own tuba soloist, Staff Sergeant David Kirvin. Thank <laughs> you. 
northwest corner of Illinois, there is a small town of 15,000 residents named Dixon. 
And Dixon is famous for producing at least three well-known Americans, including Ronald Reagan, Charles Rudolph Walgreen, and our next soloist, perhaps the most well-known euphonium player in the world. He started music lessons in the fourth grade at the local school where his dad taught band. Although initially choosing to play the clarinet, he was captivated by the baritone horn that his father had brought home from the school, and he made the switch. He went on to craft a career as a military musician, teacher, and performer, and he went on to take the euphonium out of the back row of the concert band and onto the center stage of Carnegie Hall. For the past 15 years, he's been busy operating his euphonium factory at the University of North Texas, which currently produces most of the world's current supply of professional euphonium players. By the way, he still credits his musical talent to his dad, who will be celebrating his 100th birthday this year on May 28th. I have, yes. I have word that dad is watching tonight's performance online, so an early happy birthday to Bardell Bowman, wherever you are, you can be proud of your boy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lieutenant Joel Dubois to the stage to conduct Fantasia Di Concerto, performed by world-renowned euphonium artist, Dr. Brian Bowman.
Born in Fukushima, Japan, our next soloist started piano at the age of four and euphonium at the age of 12. He moved to Tokyo when he turned 18 to study with famed Japanese euphonium artist Toru Mira. Then he came to the United States and studied at the University of Michigan and at the University of North Texas with Brian Bowman. He has performed as a featured soloist with groups around the world, including the Tokyo Symphony Orchestra and a group that he plays in called the Samurai Brass. Tonight, he performs a concerto in three movements, each one inspired by events that transpired in the composer's life during the summer of 2008. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major Treg Onsley to the stage to conduct Gillingham's Concerto Euphonium for Euphonium, performed by our solo artist, Mitsuru Saito. Thank <laughs> you. 
They can still hear your backstage. So. It's always uh, neat to see a teacher and a student uh, get together and make some music one more time. Well, in 19th century America, long before the construction of our interstate highways, rivers served as the principal thoroughfares by which people and products traveled. The crops and the commerce that fueled Western expansion traveled on boats along America's vast network of waterways. The sailors and boatmen who worked on those waterways often sang folk songs as a way to shorten the monotony of their daily routine. As they traveled along the rushing waters, bound away across the wide Missouri, longing for a chance to see and hear again the rolling river that leads the way back home, known as Shenandoah.
the basis of our mission here at Pershing Zone is service, and to that end, we're always looking to improve, and to do that, we need your help. Our website is usarmyband.com, and there, in the upper left-hand corner, you can find a button that says Patron Survey. You can fill that out and let us know about what we're doing well this year and what we will do better next time. And when you're done with that, you can poke around the website for free music and information about all of our up upcoming performances. Uh, you can also find us elsewhere online at Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, YouTube, Pinterest, and just about anywhere else they have invented to be. You can even find archived video of this performance and all of the performances at this workshop, which are available on YouTube right after the show. You can also sign up for our mailing list, and you will be the first one on your block to know about the things that are going on here. Uh, you can get advanced tickets to our ticketed performances, and you can be the first to know about what's going on with your Army Band. And now back to the show. Well, we've saved the best for last. Our final performer is one of the most celebrated soloists in tuba history. He has performed more than 3,000 concerts in 50 countries and in venues ranging from the White House to halftime shows and the Hollywood Bowl, displaying unprecedented virtuosity and showmanship all the way. Tonight, he plays an original three-movement work inspired by two giants of European jazz, the grandfather of jazz violinist Stefan Grappelli and gypsy guitar legend Django Reinhardt, who together co-founded one of the most original bands in the history of recorded jazz, the Quintet of the Hot Club of France. Ladies and gentlemen, performing Grappelling, here is the incomparable Pat Sheridan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening. On behalf of our boss, Major General Jeffrey S. Buchanan, and the men and women of the U.S. Army Band, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're fast approaching the end of an enriching week in celebration of all things tuba and euphonium. Our team, as led by Sergeant Major Don Palmeyer, has worked throughout the year uh, planning for the event, finding soloists, ensembles, clinicians, composers, exhibitors, even uh, contest winners, and of course, lots and lots of repertoire. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge our dedicated uh, Tuba Euphonium Workshop team, and also, once again, our superb support technicians for executing an outstanding workshop. Would all of you please stand so that we might express our gratitude, please. The soldier musicians of Pershing Zone help connect the Army with musicians and, and Americans, wherever they may be. By performing over 5,000 missions and reaching millions in live performances annually. Plus, of course, the many who are watching our live web stream or our archived uh, concerts on YouTube. Through these performances, we represent all of the heroic men and women who stand around the world in defense of our freedom. And I think it's a fitting end to this great week of music as we close the concert with two marches that celebrate both the euphonium and the tuba. And we'll invite our guest soloists and also our sister service musicians to join us in a unified show of force to play for you Carl King's The Melody Shop and Huffine's Them Basses. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you for your great support, and we hope you've enjoyed this week's music and this evening's performance.